Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Wednesday, May 4th. The Green League Environmental Group has launched an effort to revoke Tesla's operating license for Gigafactory Berlin. The issue came after learning of a significant paint leak. RBB24 reported on the incident and translated from German, it reads, quote, According to the State Environment Agency and the Lower Odor Spree Water Authority, 15,000 liters of paint mixture leaked out in the Tesla paint shop on April 11th, which was pumped out by a disposal company. A day later when loading, two to three liters ran out of the access road and were bound. The liquid is considered slightly hazardous to water. Now, the environmental group is asking to revoke Tesla's operating license, and they say that if the district doesn't act on the request, it will ask the Ministry of Environment to intervene. If Tesla were forced to stop the paint, then it could greatly slow production as a whole. A source familiar with the matter told Electrek that the paint shop is actually the main bottleneck in production at Gigafactory Berlin. Tesla has updated the Model S and X with a new motorized swivel function for the center screen. The new feature is undoubtedly targeting entertainment uses. Tesla's two flagship vehicles got new large horizontal center displays that are better suited for watching videos and a new backseat display powered by a gaming computer. It's not clear when Tesla made the change for the swivel screen, but the video that spotted the change mentioned that the vehicle was produced in the last week of April. It would be fair to assume that the Model S and X vehicles produced since then are equipped with a new version, but we'll have to wait for more confirmation. Volkswagen has shared positive first quarter reports. They've outlined a robust business despite the global inhibitors of supply chain shortages and conflict in Eastern Europe. According to the first quarter report, Volkswagen delivered 99,064 all-electric vehicles globally. Sales revenue was up 0.6%, with operating profit to boot. The 2022 and beyond outlook is fairly bright, according to Volkswagen. The German auto group explained that it will continue to expand its presence to global markets such as China and North America. In North America, they're targeting 10% EV market share by the year 2030. To aid in this growth, we reported that Volkswagen is considering a new cell plant in Tennessee alongside a second assembly facility. Back home, Volkswagen has confirmed a $2.2 billion investment to erect a new manufacturing plant to build what they call Project Trinity. That is the brand's next EV platform, promising maximum efficiency and speedy charging. Fisker has announced Project Ronin. This is the company's third electric vehicle, and it's going to be a GT sports car and what they claim will be the longest range of any production EV. And our estimate, that's going to be over 500 miles of range. Now, they say that the new EV will feature a battery integrated with the vehicle structure. And you can let me know if that sounds familiar. While we're excited to see what could become of the third EV from Fisker, we are also anxiously awaiting the arrival of their first EV. That is the Fisker Ocean SUV, which has yet to hit the market. Polestar has shared U.S. pricing for their Polestar 2, both for this year and also the next. Skipping ahead to the 2023 model year, the vehicle starts at $49,900, with add-on packages scaling from there. The dual-motor version starts at $51,900 and can also add various features. Polestar has announced the Pilot Pack, the Plus Pack, and the Performance Pack, costing $3,400, $4,200, and $5,500, respectively. The single motor version will get an estimated 270 miles of range, while the dual motor version of 2023 will get around 260 miles. According to Polestar, U.S. deliveries of the 23 model years will begin this September. In today's community comment, Timo says, Looking good as always, Mike. However, I would comment having a beard does make you look more mature and convincing, but that could just be me. I don't know, Timo. My views have tanked since the shave, so maybe you're not the only one. I think it might be in my best interest to get the beard back. But I've got a question for all the viewers out there. How old do you think I look with and without the beard? There's actually a loss of credibility. At least it seems that way. I should be mindful of it. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great beard.